Hello, hello, hello. And this is one for all the uh, computer geeks out there. A bit different. Now what we've got inside here is the new Raspberry Pi 25 pound computer. Yes, I couldn't believe it either. It's inside this uh, tiddly little box. Wow, <laughs> who'd have thunk it, eh? And that's where I need to go to get started. Um, yeah, I've been following the story when it broke and I thought well, I'll pick one up and have a look, you know, because it seemed to be aimed at those people that grew up with the ZX Spectrum and, you know, the early days of computing. And oh, what got you? It's the uh, compliance and safety information, just in case you should uh, blow yourself up. And we've got some something else. What's that? A uh, certificate of some description, uh, whatever. And uh, yeah, so, yeah, it's kind of aimed at all us, us, us people who grew up with computers, I believe, and they're trying to get younger folk into programming, but I'm not so sure it will work anyway. So let's have a look what's inside the old anti-static bag. Wow, <laughs> that is absolutely tiny. Um, a little bit smaller than the deck of cards, I believe. So there you go. Um, talk you through it. It's got the HDMI connector there. Rotate it around, we've got a network connector, um, two USB ports, you've got audio output, a composite output, and there's a mini, or is it micro USB jack for the power. And it is absolutely tiddly, it really is. Oh, what's that there? That's the for the um, SD card slot, I nearly forgot that. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah, I can fit it in the palm of my hand. It's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely tiny. Um, so what we're going to need to get this working? I've got all my all my tools here. I'm going to need one of these. It's a eight gig uh, memory card, SD memory card, which I'm going to use as my storage device. I'm using an Apple uh, power supply for my my iPhone, and there's a uh, the mini sorry micro usb connector which i'm going to use to power it up as you can see my autofocus is woefully inadequate so just to show you that it is a micro usb come on focus it nearly went then no it's not going to focus maybe if i wiggle it around no i give up move on move on and i've got a tiny little keyboard from zenta there you go upside down that's it this is a, a tiny little usb uh, wireless keyboard uh, from Zenta, if you just pop that out, oh, that comes the wireless dongle that's going to pop, that's going to plug into the USB port, and uh, there it is, all lit, lit up. Um, like I said, it's just a little bit bigger than the actual Raspberry Pi itself. So I've got all my gear; it's ready to go. I'm going to connect it up to my network as well, and um, now I'm going to get the old uh, SD card set up. So here I am on the Raspberry Write uh, website. You can get the details from raspberrypi.org or you can just search for it on Google. And this is a Python script for use with the with, with the Mac. I think you might be able to use it in Windows if you've got Python installed. Um, what you need to do is open up a terminal window, navigate to where the Python script is and then um, run the script. As you can see, I typed it in wrong the first time around, so I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm notoriously uh, bad at, at getting these things right, but anyway. So once you've got it in, it asks you which drive you want to write the files to. Now you've got to be careful here, you've got to make sure that you select the SD card. It doesn't automatically select the SD card, so you have to name the card that you want. Give it a name that you can remember, otherwise you may end up uh, formatting your hard drive or doing something stupid, so be aware of that. Then it gives you the option to download a Raspberry Pi compatible Linux distribution image. Now you can choose from Debian, Lin Arch Linux or Fedora or Qton Pi. There are four options and it will download it now. I've sped this up because you don't want to sit here for 20 minutes watching the download happen. Um, I mean it's all you know automatic, it's really really clever how it does it. It just downloads the, the zip file for you and, and away you go. So yeah, once the file is downloaded, um, let's just slowed it down again there for you. 
uh, it unzips the, the file to your hard drive and will give you the option again to continue. Of course, you know, it doesn't want to, it, 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 it continually asks you if you're, you know, right into the, the correct disk, which is a, a good thing. So you have to type in accept, you know, check the details, type in accept and press enter. Now I've made sure that it's the right drive. And then the last part of the process, you know, is ready. You it, it, it writes the operating system to the SD card. It might take a bit of time, uh, didn't take too long with me, but I've read elsewhere that it can take a little bit longer, but, you know, these things can happen. So you just got to be patient, and um, and that's it. And once that's done, you're ready to take your SD card out and slip it into your Raspberry Pi and boot up. Now, what we're going to see here is me booting up for the first time on, on my big television. Uh, this is connected via the HDMI cable. I've got the the, the network interface uh, connected, so it should have internet access. And I've got my my SD card inserted with the Debian image. Now you need to log in. The login is Pi and then Raspberry. So Pi is the login, Raspberry is the password, but of course me being a bit of a ham-fisted so-and-so with that little keyboard, I naturally get the password wrong the first time, so trust me, it gives you another go, and uh, this time I get it right. So Pi is the login and Raspberry is the password. Trust me, I'm typing it in. It's a very small keyboard and it's t it took me a little bit of time to get used to, and there we are, we're in. Um, you, you're logged into the to the uh, to the system now to get the 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 graphic version of of, of the operating system working you need to type in start X and press enter or return and voila it should appear on your screen here we go don't worry, the contrast will adjust itself in a moment. It's just, there we go, big raspberry. You know, you know you're right when the raspberry appears. And there you go. It's, um, it's there. And I'm going to have a little look around. I'm going to get the, uh, I'm not, I'm not that familiar with this, um, this version of Linux. So I'm just clicking away. You can hear me clicking away frantically. Uh, let's have a, let's see if we can get the internet working. Let's see if I can find my own, my own web page. I'm such a vain so-and-so. Whoops, loads of windows have opened. Why is that? Oh, cool, there's another one. Let me just close those. And I'm, closing up. I'm getting used to this thumb, this thumb controller on this little keyboard is, is a bit fiddly, so. So there you go, it's, yeah, it, it works okay. I'm just gonna type in my, my name so I can get my, my, my website up because like I said I'm a vain so and so um, well you know just in case of copyright problems I tend to just always navigate to my own website also it's uh, it's a bit f flash heavy so we'll see if it can handle it see if it slows it down so just uh, we'll just click on on that e. and um, yeah well there we go we're in it's going to take a little bit of time to to download the graphic and the uh, the files. Again, I tend to use my own site as a test just to see how things work up. Yep, there it is. It's in, and um, yeah, it's even loading my little my little graphic at the top as well. But none of the flash is working. I'm not sure how you'd get flash working on on this. I need to read up on that. Again, I'm coming to this. This is the very first time I've used this, so I'm a bit in the dark. Uh, but that's, that's all the more exciting about using this. But yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. It's a little bit slow, um, you know, to, to, to browse, but, you know, it's a little bit, you know, the response time is a little bit off, but, you know, it's £25, what do you expect? Uh, what else is there to look at? I don't really want to click anything else because I don't know what they do. <laughs> um... All right, let's have a look at preferences. Can't do any damage if I look at the preferences, can we? 
Uh, see, there you go. As you can see, it does take a little time to um, for everything to to boot up, but you know, I think that's perfectly acceptable considering the you know the technology in it being used here. I mean, it's not top of the top of the top of the range computer. It is, you know, twenty five pounds box. So, uh, so that's it, really. I'm gonna. I'm going to have a little play with this. Uh, my name's been Darren Lock. You've been watching me setting up my Raspberry Pi uh, t computer. Hope you, hopefully, you've enjoyed this video, and this will be useful for you. And uh, I'm going to have a little play around now. Thanks for watching.